Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to plot strike and dip symbols and trend and plunge symbols on geologic maps. In order to plot strike and dip symbols or trend and plunge symbols, you have to be very familiar with the compass wheel. And in another video, I fully cover the compass wheel and how to convert between quadrant and azimuth. In this video, I'm just going to focus in on azimuth convention for determining compass direction. In order to plot strike and dip symbols or trend and plunge symbols on a map, you're going to need something that can measure angle for you. This could be a contact goniometer that you might use in, say, mineralogy class for measuring the angle between crystal faces, or it could be a more typical uh, protractor that um, you've used to draw angles with. Um, but I prefer what I call a scissor goniometer. And in fact, you can get these at medical supply stores um, where they're used for measuring joint angles and that sort of thing. But these are very useful for uh, measuring angle on maps and plot strike and dip symbols or trend and plunge symbols. Okay, so here's the eight examples of structural measurements. We can see we have bedding, overturn bedding, foliation, mineral lineation, and then a combined foliation and mineral lineation symbol. In all these, we're assuming that north is straight up on the map, which is true for many maps around the world. So let's start with bedding. You'll recall that the symbol is basically a T symbol, and the long line is the strike orientation, and the short line indicates the dip direction. So we're going to start with the strike of 043. This is an easy one to plot because it's in the northeast quadrant. So with using any of these measuring devices, it's very important to keep track of where are you going to put zero based on the measurement you're going to take and maybe any calculations that you're going to do. And you're going to count up correctly. So you can see for this particular goniometer, it has black and red numbers and you have to keep track of which one correctly is counting up for the orientation that you want to do. With a strike measurement of 043, plotting in it is quite easy, and it's just 43 degrees clockwise of due north. Okay, so for 043, we're going to leave the bottom part of the goniometer here, parallel with the north lines, and then we're going to rotate this side here to 45, I'm sorry, 43 degrees, counting up in a clockwise fashion. So in this case, I'm going to look at the red numbers down here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 3, right there. And then the center of my grid is the location that that measurement was taken. So I'm going to make sure my symbol gets drawn right in the center at an orientation of 43 degrees. So there's my strike line. We can see that the dip direction is southeast, so I'm going to put the short line, which is always perpendicular to the strike line, right there. And then plotting the dip is easy. We're just going to put 23 somewhere near the strike and dip symbol. So there it is complete. For the next one, another bedding, so the symbol is going to be the same. The only difficulty is going to be plotting 321 degrees because most compasses or goniometers only go up to 180, so we have to do some simple math. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to measure 39 degrees counterclockwise from 360. So 360 is the same as north. And the difference between 360 and the strike orientation of 321 is 39 degrees. So measuring all the way around this way to 321 is going to be the same as measuring from here 39 degrees this way. So again, we're going to make sure that the base is parallel to north. We're going to measure 39 degrees, because that's the difference between 360 and 321. 
and that is right there. And then in this case, I'm counting up using the black numbers for counterclockwise, and then I'm going to move this around, but the base is still pointed directly north until I can draw my symbol right through the middle of this grid because I've deemed that the middle of that grid is the location that the strike and dip measurement was taken. So there's my strike line. We're going to put the northeast dip direction indicator, short perpendicular line pointing northeast of the strike line. And then we're going to put the dip of 78 degrees somewhere near it. Okay, so in this third example, you can see that it's vertical bedding. And vertical structures get a slightly different symbol than what your typical strike and dip symbols for normal one to 89 degree dipping planes is gonna get. And a vertical bedding is gonna look different than say vertical foliation, and that's where the map legend can be referred to in order to understand the symbol. And these maps can be looked to for using typical symbols for whatever structure you're trying to plot. So the first step is still the same. And you can see for vertical bedding, the strike line is still present, a long line, but you can see it neither dips one way or the other, so it gets two dip lines, perpendicular short lines to the strike line. So plotting, we're still gonna plot the strike line, same as always, so with a strike of 236, we're gonna measure that as 56 degrees beyond 180, because the difference between 236 and 180 is 56 degrees, so 56 degrees clockwise of 180. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to now hold my goniometer this way. So zero is down this way. And I'm gonna go now clockwise, 56 degrees. And so in this case, I'm gonna use the red numbers counting clockwise up to 56 degrees. And then I'm going to move my goniometer around, make sure north stays north on the base. And then I'm going to draw my strike line. And then because it dips neither northwest or southeast, and northwest is really a placeholder, that's why I'm a big proponent of, in parentheses, putting vertical there to emphasize that 90 degree means vertical. I'm going to put a short dip direction lines both directions. There is no need to put the dip measurement because that symbol indicates vertical bedding. In the next example, you see that it's horizontal. And again, if you need a numerical measurement, you could put that, but the strike orientation is actually irrelevant if the dip orientation is zero degrees because a horizontal plane strikes in all directions. And so again, just to emphasize that, put in the word horizontal to emphasize this is a horizontal structure. And you can see horizontal bedding in the map legend is a circle around a plus sign. So plotting that, very easy, put a plus sign and draw a circle around it. There we go. The next example is overturn bedding. Overturn bedding can be generated in a variety of ways, but essentially it is when the younging direction or the original up direction for a sedimentary layer is now pointing down. So you would measure overturn beds the same way in terms of strike and dip, but in your notes you need to indicate that those beds are overturned, meaning original paleo up is now pointed down. And you can see the symbol here. It looks similar to the bedding strike and dip symbol, but you see it has this extra little U on the back side of the strike and dip symbol. So in terms of plotting, 
you start out with this normal strike and dip symbol for betting, and then we add the U in at the end. So 185 strike, I'm gonna plot that as, that's just five degrees beyond clockwise direction 180. So there we go, that's five degrees past 180. And then I'm just gonna move my goniometer around until I can draw that strike line exactly clockwise five degrees from north-south. You can see that it dips west, so that's gonna be the same short dip direction line perpendicular to the strike line. And then I'm just going to add in the little U on the back side of the symbol like that. And then we have to add in dip angle. The next example is foliation, which we find in say metamorphic rocks. And you can see the symbol is similar to bedding except the dip direction indicator is a filled in triangle. So 073 for the strike, very easy. We're gonna count up 73 degrees in a clockwise fashion from north. Move my goniometer around so the base is north-south and draw my strike line. And then the dip direction is southeast, except now I'm gonna do a triangle and fill it in. Sometimes you, a symbol may be not filled in, but that's okay. So there's the symbol, and then we fill in the dip orientation of 55 degrees like that. Okay, mineral lineation. This is a linear structure. 356 is the trend. And so the first step of drawing a line at the compass direction, in this case trend, analogous to strike in planar structures, that is all done the same way. So that is only four degrees counterclockwise from due north 360. So now I'm going to draw that four degree counterclockwise And then looking at this 356, that's on this side. So I'm gonna draw my arrow for the structure like so. And then I'm going to draw in the plunge or right in the plunge, typically at the tip of the arrow. So that symbol represents the orientation 23 towards 356. It is a linear structure. Now many metamorphic rocks have both foliation and lineation, and you can plot those two symbols together at the location that they were measured. You're gonna start with foliation first, and that's plotted exactly the same way with just one little hint on how to make the map neat at the end. Okay, so 205 degrees is just 25 degrees clockwise of 180. So I'm gonna start with my goniometer like this. 180 is south, of course and then I'm gonna count clockwise 25 degrees. And then plot that strike line for that foliation. I'm going to do the dip, and because it's foliation, it's gonna be a triangle, and it's on the northwest side of the strike line. Now in this case, because I'm gonna to have to put a linear structure on here, that's going to add in more information on this side of my strike and dip symbol. So I'm gonna put the foliation dip on the back side, right there. Now, emanating from the center of this symbol is where I'm gonna draw my linear structure line. And so 332 is 28 degrees counterclockwise of north or 360, because 360 minus 332 is 28. So there's 28 degrees counterclockwise. And then I'm gonna draw, there's my 
trend line for that lineation. I draw the arrow on the end, and then I put the plunge at the tip. So that's a combination foliation mineral lineation symbol that might get plotted on a geologic map. There, of course, are many other symbols, but if you can master these sets of symbols, plotting the right symbol for the geologic structure that you measured should be relatively straightforward.